What is going on, guys? It is 6.30 a.m., and I'm in Nebraska. Back in Nebraska for about a week. Came here, see some family for Easter, but of course, I gotta do some fishing along the way. That is my new boat. It's new to me. I mean, obviously, it's not a new boat, but I just bought this like two days ago. I'm kind of excited. It's kind of a boat. It's just a boat to keep in Nebraska to use, like, you know, whenever I'm actually in town. I am working on getting a new boat in, uh, in Texas. Like an extra, so I don't have to borrow Rob's boat all the time. I'm, I'm like, that's in the process. That should be done pretty, pretty soon here. But in the meantime, I wanted something to fish out of while I was in Nebraska because, you know, especially during during April and May, fishing in Nebraska is not not that bad. I know I talk a lot of crap on Nebraska, but honestly, in that time of the year, in the spring and the spawn, it's actually pretty dang good. Anyways, I'm gonna quit talking. Look at that beautiful, beautiful sunrise behind me. I'm excited. This is my all-time favorite lake. Hands down, it's not because it has 10 pounders, it's not because you can catch 200 fish. This is the lake that I taught myself pretty much how to bass fish. When I bought my first boat when I was 16 years old, I came here almost every single day in the summer. Like literally came here probably four or five times a week and taught myself how to deep crank, how to throw a jig, how to throw a topwater. Everything, everything that I know to this day has pretty much been because of this lake. Super excited. I have no idea what the fishing is going to be like. Haven't fished in Nebraska yet. Uh, it could be really good. We could fit, catch them on top water, or it could be like 50 degree water and we're going to have to finesse them. I don't know. Anyways, I'm going to quit talking. I'm going to load the boat up. We're going to go catch some fish. All right, folks, here we go. So, I'm starting off with a little chartreuse crankbait. Like I say in most of my videos, I always like starting off with a moving bait. And uh, and then if that doesn't work, then I usually go to something that, you know, crawls on the bottom. But we're gonna start with a moving bait. I don't think I'm gonna be able to throw a topwater today, mainly because my depth finder's showing 55 degrees. So that's usually not the best topwater conditions. It's usually topwater. I, Try to get above 65, right around there. So we're gonna start off with this little crankbait, see what happens, go to a chatterbait. I got jig tied on, I got shaky head, I got Texas rig, I got spinner baits. I got pretty much everything tied on with me. I'm ready just to, just to kind of cycle through junk fish until I figure out a pattern. Is that a fish? Oh, I think I have a fish. Oh, I do. I do. I do. Oh my gosh. That was so that was so surprising. I did not think that was a fish at all. He ate it so so soft. Woo! There's the first one. That didn't take too long. That was like my probably fifth cast in. Little little chartreuse crankbait action. They didn't eat it all that well. I mean he just kind of swiped at it, so we'll see if I need to stick with this or go to go to something a little bit different. But for now, I mean it's catching some fish. Right there, my first Nebraska brood of the day. Jeffrey, see you later, buddy. There's one. Jig fish. Switched it up. Moved off those rocks a little bit. Got a little, little, little piglet. A little jig fish to bite. See, buddy. That was on a uh, little, they call it Missouri Craw. It's like a little chartreuse, green pumpkin chartreuse. That is good. So far, we're two for two as far as tactics go. Shallow cranking, caught a fish, and a uh, little bit deeper jig fishing. We're about 12 feet of water. So it's not super deep, but you know, for me, it's pretty deep water. Just dragging this jig along these rocks. That's a big fish. What the heck is this? No, it's not that big. It's not that big. It's a bass, though. What the heck? This thing is swimming so funny. It, it felt huge. That's a good fish, though. Look at that. That's a that's a freaking chunker right there. That's I don't know. Like I said, I don't know why he felt so heavy when I was bringing him in. He was kind of twirling around. All right, Hank. See you later, buddy.
these fish are these fish are being a little bit a little bit tricky so i'm bringing out bringing out the old finesse worm and uh, there's really no wind and once that sun gets up and there's no wind usually if the sun is low you know early in the morning late in the evening and there's no wind i just go to top water well the water is 57 degrees that's a little chilly for top water you can catch fish on top water uh during and on that temperature but it, it's not all that likely so my my go-to usually when it's slick calm like this is a finesse shaky head uh, or a drop shot or dragging a jig on the bottom and these fish are just playing a little tough to get once that sun got up so i'm gonna try this little shaky head there's a little bit of a rock bank here and just see if see if any of them are kind of pulled off i'm in 12 feet of water so we're gonna try a little bit deeper i think i think since that sun came up that they they might have moved off the bank uh, like they were up down there this morning so we're gonna see see if we can catch a fish here and then uh and then i think i'm gonna might might make a move might make a big Big, big move. There's one. That's a good fish, I think. Oh yeah, that's a good large mouth. Ooh, baby. Little guy. Come here, little guy. Not a giant, but... I mean, I'll take it. It's been slow. Whipped out the old shaky head. Did a little finessing on the rocks. Ended up catching a little guy. Not a big one. Definitely not a big one. I thought he was a little bit bigger. Just, just a little bit of hard fighting fish here. But, I mean, we're still catching some fish. That was on like a little shaky head fishing along this this little rock bank. Um, I pulled off here and uh, caught a fish. That's good. See you later, Johnny. So I've made I've made kind of a big move. I went to the far, complete opposite side of the lake. What I've noticed about this lake is it's about split in half with this bridge. And on the north side of the bridge, it's like, I don't know how well you guys can see this. It is straight chocolate milk. Like, like dirty, dirty, which is what I'm used to. This is like normally what this lake is like. On the south end, though, is the clearest I've ever seen it. I mean, it's like drinking water clear. And I think that's why I was having a difficult time catching a lot of these fishes because I was throwing a chatter bait, which is not a super good bait for clear water. Any type of moving bait with no wind is usually not good in clear water. If you got wind, you're, you're gold. But if there's no wind and it's clear, you're pretty much stuck to like slow moving finesse baits and jigs. So I moved up here where there's dirty water. I have no idea. This could be a complete disaster. There could be absolutely zero fish up in this dirty water. I'm gonna flip a jig and throw a chatterbait and uh, we'll see what happens. There's one. Oh, there's a fish. Chatterbait fish in the dirty water, baby. Oh, this is a good sign. This is a good sign. Come here, buddy. Chunky fish. Gosh dang, son. Look at that. That's like, okay. If that's not the strangest looking bass, comment down below if you guys know what's wrong with this fish. It's like straight, straight up humpback. Let me know, let me know in the comments section if you guys know like actually what's wrong with it other than it just having some like odd disease or something, but that is so strange. I've never seen, I've never seen a bass look like that before. All right, Lucas. See you later, buddy. All right, that's a good sign. I changed over to the uh, the black and blue crazy jig, and uh, since obviously it's muddy water, I'm always saying if the water's muddy, you throw the black and blue, it stands out the best. And right there, that worked. They came right out of that brush pile, so it might be tucked up against this wood. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna be pretty much golden throwing a jig and a and a bladed jig through these uh, through these trees here. Well, I'm hoping for a big one though. This is this should be where the big berth is hanging out. It's right in these right in these trees. Well, that's how you do that. Oh, 
There's one. Just about uh, killed myself. About stepped on my camera. But hey, that's a fish. A little muddy water jig fish. See you later, Richard. Six and a half hours later. Well, folks, that is the end of today's fishing adventure. I realized I didn't even do an outro. I fished, that was the last clip you guys saw was probably like 11 o'clock or something, and I fished until like noon or one. I fished for a couple more hours. It was just no wind, bluebird skies, clear water, just did not work out. And, and the water wasn't quite warm enough for them to be super shallow and spawning yet. It's just kind of a funky time to be fishing. But we caught fish. You know, I caught some fish. I almost freaking killed myself setting the hook on that last one. I thought, I thought that you guys might enjoy that one. I thought that was kind of funny looking back at it. But I wanted to thank you guys for watching. Again, you guys have until the end of the month. If you want to buy any flare gear, you get entered to win a $250 bass fishing rod. It's a favorite Rush Series rod. All you got to do is just make a purchase, make an apparel purchase on the website. I'll link it down below. You got until the end of this month to do so. I really appreciate you guys' support when you guys purchase any gear from uh, from the website. It really does help me um, you know, fund some of these adventures, some of these trips. I've got some big stuff planned. You guys are going to see quite a few Nebraska fishing videos coming up here. Uh, I don't plan on leaving Nebraska for like four or five more days. I'm going to fish every single day, a new lake every single day, a new pond, new body of water in hopes in hopes of catching some true, true Nebraska brutes. Anyways, I'm going to quit talking. I really, really do hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you leave a like and drop a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching, and peace. Ooh, there's a big pike. Ooh, I see a big pike just laying there. I'm going to bring my swim jig right in front of it, see if I can catch it. Yep, got it. Oh, we missed it. Oh, God, that's a good one. That was a good one. Son of a gun. Oh, shoot. Okay, all right. Well, they like the swim jig.